for us here. Now it's the opposite of Teletubbies. Teletubbies was some voodoo about, I don't know, it was Can't weird. Can't the show, oh, man. <laughs> I know. Good evening, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, ignorant millennials. Welcome to the show. Welcome. I'm joined yeah. today by my guest, Bafana. How you doing? I'm good, guys. Welcome to the show, ignorant millennials. Guys, listen, don't forget to like and subscribe to the current show you're watching. If you haven't subscribed and liked before, go to our previous episodes, join the Ignorant Millennials platform. Kat, thank you so much, man. Oh, thank you very much. But we're not alone today. We're hey. by like an African <laughs> warrior here. Oh my gosh. You know, you can tell his body is dashiki. All right, yeah. All right. And All right. This is on. like a modern dashiki. It even yeah. comes in like yes. a t-shirt. Calm down, yeah. peasants. Calm Where's down. Where's the pocket? Where's the pocket? Dashiki is not complete without a pocket. It is a pocket, man. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. All right, all right. Thanks, yeah. guys. Nice to be here. I'm gonna go now. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have you on the clock. Like yeah. we have you for the next 25 minutes. Yeah, we have you on cool, the show. Cool. Yeah. No, my name is Trevor Chikambure. I'm from Harare, Zimbabwe, but I've been here for 10, been in SA for 10 years. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, okay. so, what does Trevor do, man? Oh. Uh, you know, work for the man, make some money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. I I write code. I'm a developer. Um. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. what I do in, during the day. Yeah, and during the night. <laughs> uh, that's all interesting stuff happens. <laughs> yeah. So, nah. <laughs> it's well, a your typical weekend, man. What do you do on a weekend? Like, I mean, people have this perception that you guys are boring as fuck. Oh, so, these guys being what? The developers? Yes. Okay. Well, I don't know. It's all relative, right? Uh, someone might think I'm boring. I don't think I'm boring, but I probably... I'm boring to a lot of people. I don't know. So, I know. What is your typical weekend? Help us demystify. Like, are you guys really boring? Uh, well, first of all, I don't know who me guys is, but uh, as for <laughs> me personally, what I do on a Saturday is usually make breakfast, play with the baby. Oh, daddy uh, duties. Yeah, well, you know, it's yeah. gotta be done. You know, oh, <laughs> that's good. Proud yeah. father. Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah. So today we're gonna like discuss a very, very. Like, I don't know zero about this topic. I know right. if you're millennials, you might know, yes, yeah, so I was a BA, whatever. But Shout out I don't to your friends. You're talking to your friends. Very little about the fourth industrial revolution. Yes. It's not that political, but I've been hearing it mostly Everywhere. by political parties. Fourth industrial revolution. Right, like, right, right. What is, what, guys, what, the, what is this thing? Yo, um, Afana, what is this thing, eh? <laughs> Look, I'll tell you what people should be thinking about it. But okay. people should be thinking about it in the sense that the way that the world does business, yes. which essentially yes. is how we function within the society, yes. right? Um, how we are as people is facilitated through business. Yes. And so how do you use medicine? How do you use insurance? Yes. How do you use um, basic transportation services, right? The way you understand it yeah. now, yeah is about to change very drastically yes. because of digital. Yes. So that's the wave that's coming. Trevor, I don't know what, how you've thought, thought about it. Yeah, I, so I, I like to sort of go to first principles with mm. things. So if you think of industrial revolution, um, there's, it's the fourth, so there's you know, allegedly mm -hmm. been three. Yes. Um, and what they've all meant is uh, very different things so like they made different things in different in the different industrial revolutions and they used different things and so forth but the effect on society was very similar at every turn and each time yeah, yeah. Mm. so the effect usually is to make something that human beings used to do before more efficient, efficient. by the end of the revolution okay. at a mass scale yes so you look at the first industrial re revolution clothes were now sort of where people wore the same clothes for you know months, years, whatever. Mm. Now, because of the textile industry, clothes were a thing, and people could buy and sell clothes, and they were cheap because they were being mass produced. Yes. So, the, the the process of clothing yourself, the process of finding clothes for yourself, became a lot became, became a lot more uh, quicker, and that's kind of the first effect. But there are many, many, obviously, many other effects. Yeah, and similarly, the second and third industrial revolutions, something became more efficient as a result of the revolution. So here, I think it's exactly the same thing, mm. but in order to understand what that thing is for us now, because we're in the middle of it, so yes. it can look like something different. First Industrial Revolution, all they wanted to do was pump water out of wells. Mm. So they invented this steam machine engine thing 
you could have been like, okay, now everybody needs to learn how to make steam engines. Mm. This is the future. And maybe you'd have made money for three, four, five years. But it, that wasn't the thing in the end. In the end, it was auto me mechanization, rather. Yes. Mechanization was the thing powered by the steam thing. So right now, we might, because we don't know what's going to happen, we could focus on just the one thing mm. and lose sight of the overall effect oh, that's that you might have. So that's what amazing. We, so what are we moving toward? What do we say for the industrial revolution? What, what are we moving? Like, what is the big hoo-ha about it? And when is it going to begin? Has it begun? Like In the middle of it, right? Yeah, so for me, I, there are very precise dates to these things, but I find that very weird. It's like there's nobody who rang a bell said, okay, first industrial revolution is about Stop. to start now. <laughs> and then, you know, in 1830, it was like, okay, it's over now. And then 1850, it was like, okay, second now. You know, like it's, <laughs> it's kind of a retrospective, mm. arbitrary mark in time that we decide this is when it started Around and this about is when it ended. Time. So I think they're all part of one constant evolution of uh, mankind, humankind, That's so into, from sort of uh, inefficient, <laughs> inefficient beings who needed to spend all of their time finding food, yeah. which is, you know, if you believe in evolution, the cavemen, or even if you don't, if you believe in theology, yeah. most theologies will talk about uh, times when people, you know, used to go out and cut wood and so forth. Yeah. And so we continually evolving and becoming more and more efficient. So it's all continuous. We just decide which ones are more interesting to us and then give them fancy names because it's easier for branding, right? Mm. It's easier for branding to just say fourth industrial revolution rather than to say the kind of normal evolution of human beings. Mm. Yeah. That's so, just when that happened. Yeah, yeah. So I think, yes, okay, if we're now sort of limiting the definition to what it's been uh, described as, mm. we are definitely in the fourth industrial revolution towards the end of the innovation and invention phase because mm. that's the first phase of any um, industrial revolution. Sure, it underpins all the other phases, but the first phase is innovation, innovation and invention. And we're kind of sort of coming towards the end of that people are now starting to apply that innovation and innov invention on a grander scale mm. and extract value from it in terms of profit or return mm. to shareholders or you know just joy or whatever it is they, they which extract. touches what on on what we just spoke about before we started the show yeah about like now as a result of all of the these technologies and internet and all those things that we are attributing to what has started that boom of the fourth industrial revolution yeah. You know, there are so many ways to now use it mm. to mm. improve and make things more efficient and better, safer, I guess, efficiency. So how should we in a South African context start empowering or growing our economy by well, how can we take advantage of what's happening right now okay. to address things like an unemployment, poverty and so forth? Um, so here's where I think a lot of people are short sighted about yeah. it. They're right but only for a short term, mm. for a short time. Uh, people say, you know, everyone must study maths, everyone must study coding. <laughs> yes. And yes, you should. I mean, those things are really good for various things and more importantly for the discipline of the mind. They're good for that. But that's not the future. If you look at, like I said, first industrial revolution, mm. if you had staked your future on building steam engines, like for like, yeah. in four or five years you'd be broke because everyone was doing it, everyone knew how to do it, there was a big factory that's doing it. So it was, you can, you can do that and you can probably make money from it and, and survive and so forth, but it's kind of short-sighted. Here's where I think, because the biggest part of the sort of communications part of the fourth industrial revolution, because you know, there's at least three sort of different parts to it that are happening simultaneously. The biggest part of the communications part is big data and artificial intelligence, yes. right? And most people don't understand that. Me, I really don't understand it, but mm -hmm. I do understand that it's something that seems to take a bunch of data mm. and draw insights from it. Yes. You know, in a nutshell, that's what AI does. Yeah. How it does it, ask a professor. Mm. Now, I know because of the industry I work in that some people the main problem uh, AI people and big data people have is knowing which data to measure, to collect, and you know mm. what I mean? Yes. It's, it's a whole discipline within that. Don't ask me what the name is. <laughs> but that's where, that's where we can kind of liberate yes. uh, people in that 
there's a lot of things that computers computers are good at doing things quickly they're not good at guessing things okay. they're very 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 bad Man, at guessing guess things it. human beings are extremely good at guessing things okay. like comparatively okay. they're extremely good and they're extremely good at creativity so there's where human beings can plug in to say sort of look at the AI people need to find a way to present their data in a way that's easily understandable to any human being. Mm. The person then communicates some creation or some insight they can draw just from looking at it mm. and then that tells the computer program which data points are important and then those are used in the AI process. Yes. Something along those lines, I think I've explained that terribly, but my <laughs> point is that you can apply human creativity to AI and that, I think there's a gold mine there. Mm. Think about if you could um, ask uh, small scale farmers mm. about plants and so forth. So right now what you do, you send a survey, have you seen this plant, what does it do, is it, is it mm. bad for the other plants, is it good, whatever the case. What if you could just ask them to identify whether a patch of grass will, is good for planting or not. You don't need to ask them why they, they, mm. they're, they're saying that. Then you teach your program to learn, you know, the reasoning that should yeah. happen, yeah, that should take place. That's what AI does. It yes. takes in a bunch of data, it maps it to some answer. Mm. The human being just walks it through that by, you know, looking at thousands of patches of grass and saying, no, that one will work, that one will work. So then it learns works. that. They don't need to know how to yeah. code a computer. Mm. They just need to know how to do what they do. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yes. So that's where we can plug in human beings. Mm. And, and I think the person who does that is the person who's going to really shift the way we look at employment uh, and, 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 you know, kind of So more less people are going to be employed. Mm. Well, in the model I just described, those rural farmers, most of them only make money from um, selling what they grow. So if there's a drought, they're fucked. If there's, you know, a, a bigger company that's selling, whatever the case, they're very vulnerable. But if they can, if they, they can um, um, add to their income by doing what I described, then it can be applied in many other places and they may not need to continue doing this because then the machines can take over and take care of those, those tasks and they just provide the expertise. It's knowledge work. No, 100%, yeah. but I hear you, but um, I just want to expand beyond the example that you just mm. used, like technology in general just means like, I mean, less people, I mean, Standard Bank closed, uh, what, 100 branches or something like that as well like most of these banks are closing branches and downscaling and it's all technological because who is still close to a branch in metric so people don't frequent their branches as they used to go so the fourth industrial revolution or i don't know if that is still part of the third or it has lead why why should we take interest in this if it leads to people having less jobs because that's, that's, the, that's, that's the threat of technology, in essence. In fact, it's no longer a threat, it's a reality of technology. So, I would like to, you to describe for me any technology that has taken, like, in aggregate, taken away jobs. Kodak. I can't, I, Kodak. Yes, there used to be, there used to be Kodak um, shops where you used to go and they used to, used to print photos and whatever, mm -hmm. Kodak closed. Uh, no, 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 I'm not saying... Faster. I'm not saying what companies have closed. Yeah. Um, my question is, give me an example of technology that in aggregate took away jobs and employment from society. In aggregate. I, I, can't, I honestly can't think of a single one. So are you saying, I'm not, unless I'm not understanding your question, are you saying branches closing down has nothing to do with technology? Um, it has everything to do with technology and a little bit to do with stupidity, right? Stupidity. <laughs> Well, yes. okay, yes. That's, that may be a little harsh. <laughs> Sorry, Standard Bank. <laughs> Please don't close my account. <laughs> His opinions are not of ours. In your millennials. No, okay, so stupidity is harsh. No. But um, what I'm saying is that uh, if you look at, again, history is a great teacher. First Industrial Revolution, about 90% of the world were in agriculture. Everyone had to farm because each person could produce just about enough for one person. First Industrial Revolution came, mechanization came. If, if, uh, make, machines could take over a lot of the farming skills that yes. people needed and it, 
At first, it meant if all you knew was how to grow crops and harvest them and so forth, that was bad for you, the individual, in that time. Mm. But by the end of 10, 15, 20 years, those machines provided so much more economy for the whole of society in a, on a grand scale mm. that I'm really sorry you lost your job, but you know, it was for a good cause that 10,000 more people got one. Okay, okay. So, so if you, if you take mm. the long view, if you take the aggregate view, which is difficult to do, especially for politicians, because they are speaking to the people who are no. losing jobs so who's now. So who's going to gain those jobs now? The, right now, those people who lost their jobs are standing. No, those jobs are dead. dead. They'll never come back to human so beings. What? Computers have taken over. Let's give up on it. So. But let's do what <laughs> we're good at. Let's be creative. Let's yes. uh, use our creativity to help. So think about if Standard Bank could leap 10 years into the future where now, instead of their branch people sort of doing the things a computer can do, like printing out your statement and, yeah. you know, taking some cash or whatever. Yeah. They're now looking at you and engaging with you on a sort of sales marketing level. Yeah. They're trying to... Which is also being done by technology nowadays. You get uh, phone calls from uh, computers and whatever. Uh, how long do you stay on that call? How long do I stay on that call? Yeah, when, when a computer calls you and it's not so trying to give you money. If you, anybody who's selling has nothing to do with computers. I'm not interested. It's no, no, no. You're saying you. computers make yeah. phone calls to you. Is yes, that what you're yes. How long do you, when you hear a computer on yes. your phone, how long do you stay on that call? I, like I said, it has nothing to do with the computer. When right. I hear a sale, I drop right. the phone call. Sharp, okay. Because yeah, I'm not interested in the okay. sale. Okay. No, but all I'm saying is that there's, there's some job out there that I may not have been yeah. may not be able to imagine now because I'm at I'm in it mm, with yeah. everybody else yeah. we're at the beginning of yeah. the thing it we don't see the result. future that is this which is why I say if Standard Bank could leap 10 years into the future and see what value human beings could add and then repurpose those branches to enable that value addition so 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 unfortunately that can't happen in real time but it will happen with time and it may not even be physical branches anymore. It could be any something else. You yeah. can't even imagine now. But so, but so you're saying what basically what you're living, what you're saying is basically hope. It's not even a reality. There's not even a tangible plan to for this. There's not even anything. It's just hopefully someday. What about what history? happened with the first one? You so we uh, we that's like would you that's like it, as like that's like as like when we're migrating from like hunting for meat and whatever. You cannot say that eventually, uh, because that worked and there were more jobs, whatever, it became about and whatever, that the same will result. You cannot, you cannot but aren't there essentially the already three industrial revolutions and we've seen all of the efficiencies how, that how came out we, of what, what employment have, have they created? Anyways. Your employment, whatever job you do now, it's a result of one of those. Yeah, yeah, I, I, but 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 no. But as my job, as my job is created, somebody loses their job. No, like, okay. There's not like the world is not full of developers and 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 people in IT. Mm. They, they, it's not there and okay. whatever. So even with the like, for example, with the role of your chartered accountancies and whatever in terms of auditing, that as well. Soon enough, mm. because of the, the the way technology is is evolving, they're gonna lead Nest Chinese and so, so forth. And because of the number of businesses who are actually as well uh, now closing down in terms of uh, what you call it physical presence and whatever because auditors also do uh, what about all the jobs we stand whatever. to gain which jobs okay can there's I hope can that's I, what I'm saying can I give you, hope. There's no pain. can I give you a current real job that has been created as a result of the third and fourth industrial revolution so you say because you're a developer someone lost a job right yeah. But now you've got a scrum master, you've got an agile coach, you've got a manager, you've got a development ma manager. What if I All of those yeah. people, they, those jobs didn't exist 10 mm. years ago, 15 years ago. They didn't exist. Like and they're high value jobs. People get paid lots of money for this. Lot. So all I'm saying is at an individual level, for sure, people will lose jobs. But at a societal level, there are way more jobs that are created at the end of any technological advancement mm. than are lost in aggregate. Mm. So it, if... I understand. Like personally, it's a scary thing. You're gonna <laughs> if you're gonna lose your job. I beg to differ with that because if you look at global economic stats, mm. jobs and jobs and jobs have been lost. You cannot say that that is eventually gonna happen. If there's no physical plan, it's based on purely hope. Like well, it's based on hope, basically. Well, I mean, even like even your countries like India as well. Like the unemployment as well is shooting high and whatever. So that that's the thing. Like 
the population is growing, but at the same time, you're like, hey, let's take jobs. <laughs> let's take jobs. Okay. Like, people are cre- procreating, but we're taking jobs as well. All right. All right. Listen, um, <laughs> this is quite, <laughs> it's quite a conversation, and I think we haven't had it in such an open way before. Mm-hmm. And Platform, I'd love for you guys to continue this on our comment section. Please share with us on Twitter. We're going to talk I am, hashtag I am fourth industrial revolution. It's going to be on Twitter. Share with us what you think. What are your thoughts? Like, what are your fears? What are your hopes and dreams? Whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. And uh, this was a lovely, great discussion. Guys. Yeah, yeah. I think there's, there's a lot more to be said. But yes. um, I think at the end of the day, mm. uh, technological advancement is scary for individuals, but beneficial for society at large. As, um, as a as a like a law of physics. So, okay. um, closing I'd, statements, yeah. I beg to differ uh, <laughs> substantially with that, but um, yeah, technology, unemployment, and <laughs> the growing population. So one of them has to die, and one of them that's currently dying is employment. Mm. So. Um, that's why it is, mm. but ignorant millennials. But at forget. least you can make money this way now, right? Hundred <laughs> percent. Don't get me wrong. Thank you. Don't get me wrong. <laughs>